I'm Tyler Young, a Dell Certified Sales Engineer here at XPyte Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be doing a high-level comparison of two of Dell's flagship PowerEdge server models, the R740XD and the R750. Let's get started. First, let's begin with the chassis. You'll notice that the R740XD is slightly shorter than the R750. However, they both hold the same 2U form factor. Taking a look at the front of the server, you'll notice that both servers are capable of holding up to 12 three and a half inch hard drives. For those of you who prefer two and a half inch drives instead of three and a half inch drives, don't worry, Dell didn't forget about you. Both servers actually have chassis options that allow up to 24 two and a half inch drives. Both the R740XD and the R750 have the ability to utilize SAS, SATA, and NVMe op options. In addition to the drives up front, both servers actually have the capability to add up to four two and a half inch drives in the rear. Now with this, Dell made a huge improvement here. With the R740XD, the rear storage is limited to only SAS or SATA drives. However, with the R750's rear drive base, you now have the capability to tremendously increase your IOPS using up to four NVMe drives. Moving on to the fans. You'll notice that while both sets of fans are hot swappable, as indicated by the orange tabs, the fans in the R750 are slightly larger. Now this is because the R750 configuration is utilizing Dell's high performance fans. Now these high performance fans are able to generate a greater airflow as it pulls cold air throughout the chassis from the front to the rear. Next, let's take a look at the processors. You can't see them now as they're covered by these heat sinks, but hold them up side by side and they pretty much look the same. Now, while both the R740XD and the R750 are dual socket systems, what's different about them is within the technology itself. The R740XD supports Intel's second gen Cascade Lake processors with core counts ranging from four to 28 cores. The R750, on the other hand, takes advantage of Intel's newest third gen Ice Lake processors. These have the ability to scale up to 40 cores per socket. 40 cores per socket, that's 80 cores total in a single TU chassis, that's absolutely insane. Now in another video, you'll see me deep dive into the technological advances between these two chipsets. But the key takeaway that I want you to get out of this is that in the R750, and the entire 15th gen PowerEdge portfolio allows you to dramatically increase the potential workload on a given server. Now in the same area as the processors, you'll notice the memory modules. While both servers utilize the same DDR4 memory and support RDIMMs, LRDIMs, and Intel's Optane memory, there are a few differences I want to point out. The R740XD can populate up to 24 DIMMs per chassis and support speeds of up to 2933 megatranches per second. The R750, on the other hand, supports up to 32 DIMMs per chassis and supports speeds of up to 3200 megatranches per second. Finally, we reach the rear of the server. Here, you'll find power supplies, management port, and PCIe slots. Taking a look at the power supplies, we see these orange tabs, which, as I mentioned earlier, indicates that the power supplies are hot swappable. Now, you may have noticed that the power supplies are more evenly spread out in the R750. This was no accident. The placement of these power supplies, along with other airflow improvements like Dell's new T-shaped motherboard design, high-performance fan placements, and etc., all contribute to what Dell refers to as multi-vector cooling 2.0. Don't let this fancy term fool you, it's just Dell's way of saying that they greatly increase the airflow and thermal efficiency of the overall chassis. Another part of Dell's multi-vector cooling 2.0 is advancements in liquid cooling configurations. Dell's proprietary leak sense technology can be intertwined with their iDirect 9 management console to send you alerts and even automatically shut down the server if a coolant leak is detected. How cool is that? Moving on to the expansion slots. Now, it's important to note that even though both of these server models can have up to eight PCIe slots on a single chassis, there are some differences. The first notable difference is that the R740XD is limited to Gen 3 lanes, while the R750, however, uses the current industry standard of Gen 4 lanes. Besides PCIe 4.0, another improvement in the R750 is the ability to have up to 6x16 PCIe slots versus only having four in the R740XD. Now these by 16 slots are required for high throughput PCIe cards, such as 100 gig network cards and GPUs. Speaking of GPUs, the R750 supports up to two double width GPUs or up to six single width GPUs. Other uses for these PCIe slots would be for network cards, external perks, and other PCIe compatible components. 
Now, on to my favorite feature of the R750, the Boss S2. Now, before I explain the Boss S2, I think it's important to give some backstory on what the Boss card is. So, with 14G servers, you have the option of storing your OS on a pair of M.2 chips within a single PCIe slot, referred to by Dell as the Boss card, Boss S1 to be more specific. Now, picture this, your OS is stored on a Boss S1, in a RAID 1 of course, and one of the chips fails for whatever reason. Your server still runs as normal because of the redundant chip, so you don't sweat it. You call up your Xbyte rep to have a new M.2 chip overnighted to you, and now it's time to replace the failed chip. You power off the server, remove the boss card from the PCIe slot, replace the chip, reboot the server. Those of you who have done it, you know it's a slight inconvenience, especially because you have to power down your server, costing your company money. Now, what if I told you that is no longer the case with the R750? The reason being is that instead of burning a PCIe slot for the boss card, there's a specialized slot right here for what is known as the Boss S2. And this card is hot swappable. When Dell first made this announcement of this feature, I literally jumped out of my chair. This is something that many of my customers and I have been begging and wishing for for years. So continuing back to the network cards, well, the network daughter card specifically, if you're familiar with the PowerEdge servers, you probably already know that the network daughter card is Dell's proprietary name given to the network card that is literally bolted on the motherboard. Moving forward with the 15th gen servers, Dell is adopting the industry standard term of OCP 3.0. So just keep that in mind if you're building out an R750 on our online configurator and see the term OCP 3.0. That is what that is referring to. And for my fellow Star Wars fans out there, no, this has nothing to do with our friend C3PO. Oh, I almost forgot. Remember earlier when I mentioned that the rear drive bay now supports NVMe drives? Well, here's where they go. And that was a high level overview of Dell's R740 XD and Dell's R750. Thank you for watching today. If you have any questions or to speak to one of our Dell certified engineers, see the contact information below. To see more videos like this, make sure to check out our channel. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.